Krakowski Festiwal Górski, sobotni, późniejszy już wieczór. Jesteśmy jeszcze przed prelekcją mojego obecnego gościa. My guest is a legendary climber from England, Jerry Moffat. Hello. Welcome in Krakow. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks for having me. Jerry, uh, reading uh, the info sheet of the festival, one can find an information that uh, you don't climb anymore virtually, that you climb only occasionally. Yes, Is that's correct, yes. Well, I'm really interested in uh, what does it mean occasionally in your case? Occasionally, um, I, for instance, I might go and visit friends in Germany who go climbing. And if they go climbing, then I will go climbing with them sort of every day or something like that. But I, I don't really climb in England very much because I climbed near my house within 20 minutes. I must have done every climb 10 or 15 times. And, uh, it, you know, my, my friends who I climb with, they don't climb so much there, so I don't climb. But does it mean once a month you climb? Oh, no, no, not even that. So I might climb. Oof. I might climb three days every six months, or I might climb four days in a row one month. Like if, say in England it's raining and I have nothing to do, then I will climb indoors sometimes. But it, de it depends what I'm doing. I'm normally really busy doing other things, so I don't yeah. have time to do it and I don't have the motivation. And because I'm doing other things, I enjoy surfing. Yeah. And sometimes when I go climbing, it hurts my back or my fingers. And I think if I get injured, I can't go surfing. So then I think I don't want to go climbing because I'm going surfing tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. So you, you protect your body for other things. But it was a kind of a, you know, one moment decision that one day you woke up thinking, OK, that's over. That's the end of my uh, really systematic climbing. Or, did, or, or it was a process, no, a natural conduct oh, man, of life. It, 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 it was. To, to, for me to stop climbing was very, very, very hard because it was a, an addiction like a drug, like a heroin for me for so long. I was addicted to climbing. I loved it, but my life was climbing. So to just stop one day, it's impossible. But I realized that uh, I'd come to the end of my career of doing new routes and hard climbs, and it was going to be harder from the age of 40 to, to press myself. Uh, also... I didn't really want to have the rest of my life relying on sponsorship, yeah. going to a sponsorship and a trade show. Can you sponsor me next year? Can you do this? And then my income is dependent on other people. So I wanted to make myself uh, financially independent and be away from climbing so I can support myself. I also had a family and children. And when I had children, I wanted to put them before my climbing. So it was a number of different things, really. And I just drifted. It drifted off climbing, um, but I'm still very passionate about it. I still love it. I'm still interested in it. Um, if you ask me, if you could see one sporting event in the world, like a World Cup or an Olympic Games or something, I would say no. I'd like to see a climber climb. I'd like to see Adam Ondra or Alex Migos climb or any of the top climbers climb. It's still my passion, and that's what excites me. But you get to a stage where your body can't do it. Well, uh, in a while I'm going to ask you for the Olympic Games, which is a hot issue right now for the climbing world. Uh, but first, let's talk a little about um, about 80s and 90s. Because yeah. it was a time when uh, another previous big change happened. Yes. in climbing and you were a part of it. Yes. I mean climbing movies, yes. Yeah. Climbing heroes, yeah. climbing so to say celebrities. Yes. How did you manage with it because it was something new then, yes? Uh because you know what it, I mean because yes, in I understand was, that. Yeah, was it, more private everything, and every, everything was new but because you're in it at the time, you never think you're doing anything special. It was just it's just what we did. So we just went climbing, but you don't think I'm making something in history here that people will look back on in years to come and think this is incredible. It was just, you just went climbing, you know, so it was, it felt like you were pushing the standards, but we, I didn't feel like we were pushing the standards more in the 80s than, 
than people were in the 70s or in the 60s or in the 50s. I think everything's relative and everybody tries to push their own standard for, for their own generation. But with, um, in the 80s in particular, climbing changed a lot because it was the start of sponsorship. So I was one of the very first climbers to be sponsored uh, and you didn't have to work and you actually earned a living from it and they paid your air flights to different places. Um, it's when there was more magazines, um, videos started coming out, competitions came out, so there was, there was a lot going on. Well, but it had to be somehow, I suppose so at least, somehow problematic because you know, apart from doing many, many new and interesting things that, as you say, were quite natural, were, uh, were an element of simply what you were doing then, uh, you became one of the iconic characters, right, of the iconic persons of, of your time, and it was surely connected with some, well, disadvantages. I mean, being yeah. recognized everywhere, you know. Yeah, My name is Jerry, yes, yes, <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, it, it, in England, nobody would ever come up to you and you go, are you Jerry Moffat? Mm -hmm. It's not the English way at all. People will ignore you. You, you never mm -hmm. get... You never, I never got any of that really. Sometimes if you go to a foreign country and you do a competition, people come up to you and they want an autograph. But um, I, never really, I never really had that. My, my passion was always traveling and trying to do new climbs. That's what motivated me, you know, doing first ascents. Well, now sport climbing is facing a new challenge, a new, I don't know, maybe level, maybe new sphere, yes? Yes. And this is the Olympic Games. Yes. Many people are afraid that it will uh, change sport climbing in a bad way. Other people say that there will emerge two different groups of climbers. Yes, sport climbers, I mean, taking part in competitions, not really focused on rock climbing. And maybe, uh, maybe with time, mm. yes, being further and further from what climbing really is. What do you think about it? What will Olympic Games... I mean, cl climbing, climbing is, it will be the Olympic Games. So it, that's what climbing is. I think the only thing that will change is the media. So how the media perceives something. Um, so if somebody wins the gold medal and they're from Poland, they will be put on a they will be the best climber in the world and they'll be the only best climber. There'll be nobody else. It'll be just him and people push people on the media, uh, in the media onto a pedestal when they've won a, a gold medal. Um, for me, my goal was to do new climbs and be the best all-round climber. So for me, I would always judge somebody on what they do outside. Mm -hmm. But that's not to say that I don't think it's equally acceptable for somebody else to judge somebody who does competitions and if if you only do competitions and that's what you're into and you love competitions and that's what you want to do i think it's equally as good as climbing outside for me personally it doesn't interest me as much as doing new climbs well, yeah, but, it, but it's not but it's not belittling what they do i mean it's incredibly hard to win a competition and it will be really hard to win the gold medal so well, it's important but i, I think the it, it, the, the, the sport will kind of diversify a little bit. But uh, for me, the only problem I see is that the media will say, this is the best climber in the world because he won the gold medal. Well, and don't you see um, uh, another danger uh, that one's being recognized yes, as climbing by a white audience, yes, being in Eurosport, yes, in all main channels because of gold medals, yes. Yeah. And it may happen that suddenly, and sometimes without uh, an understandable reason, it, uh, it, it occurs that some nation really likes climbing, some yeah. society, some yes. people really likes climbing, simply, well, us, as an Olympic game, yes? Not, uh, yeah. not because many people there climb, yeah. but simply like yeah. ski jumping in Poland. Yes. No one, no one jump. Yeah. But everyone, everyone watches it, yes? We, yes. we love ski jumping, no one knows. I was watching no it today, I was why. watching yeah. it today in the everyone hotel. Everyone in Poland. Uh, I was watching it today, that's It funny. may happen that, that people once, uh, once understood that sport climbing is somehow connected with 
rock climbing, yeah. uh, that they will start to demand from sport climbers also yeah. to have good results at rocks. Yes. And it may happen that we will have in rock climbing, yeah. well, beg your pardon, all of that shit. I mean, yes. A yeah. lot of money, yeah. a lot of pressure, yes. maybe some cheating. Yeah. Yes, because we want our gold medalist also yeah. to do 9B. Yes? Yeah. So we, we need to find good 9B for him. Yeah. An easy 9B, we, we need to have a result. Yeah. Don't you think it's a danger? Uh, How do you think? I don't think it's a danger. That's it's it. just going to happen. It's just going to happen. For me personally, I don't like um, a lot of the Olympic Games. I don't like it. I don't like the opening ceremony. I don't like all the politics. I don't like all the bureaucrats in it. Um, when I was younger, it was quite good and it was a running race. Now it's become so big and so commercial. And on television, they would say, the ultimate is a gold medal in the Olympics. Well, it's just not. You know, if you're a rock climber in the 80s, your goal was not winning a gold medal in the Olympics. I didn't even watch the Olympics. I didn't even care about the Olympics. My goal was to do a new climb, you know, but everybody in their own sport always thinks that their sport is the ultimate and the most difficult and the most, most incredible. But definitely the ultimate in sport is not winning a gold medal in the Olympics. There's a lot, a lot of other things for other people, like football, you know, you're the ultimate yeah. for a football, I would think, is winning the World Cup. Winning the World Cup yeah. or Champions League. Yeah, winning the World Which Cup or Champions League. Which, by the way, is League. going to be more and more commercial, yes? Yes. Just 30 years ago, yeah. there was only one team from each country. Yeah. And now from England, we have five teams. If they qualify, if they qualify. Two ones, if Are they changing it? Yeah. Is I mean, before, they used to have to qualify, so sometimes... They didn't always get through the knockout stages to qualify for the Champions League, did they? So you might you might get into the Champions League but not get to the end bit. Not 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 get to to to, to knockout. Not, yeah, knockout not get to finish, the knockout. But still being in the group, yes. Which yes. Is extremely difficult for teams from Hungary, Poland. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Switzerland it, and so on. Yeah, yeah, it's such a big sport, and the Champions League is everything. But if you're a climber. It's completely not interesting at all. I mean, I never watched well, any football Well, that's true, but it may happen climbing. that we will have something like yeah. Champions League yeah. in climbing. I, I mean, a very, very commercial, yeah. but also you can't remaining change on a it. very hard sport yeah, yeah. high sport level product. Yeah? yeah, yeah, you can't change it, and I think that's just the the reality of, of climbing. And I, as long as people don't harm the rock, as long as they don't go out to the rocks and leave loads of litter all over the place, park the cars all over the place, and they leave nature as it is. For me, I don't care if people climb indoors. I don't care if they do big hauls. I don't care about the Olympics, but what I really don't like is where people abuse the environment and loads of people going out on rocks and shouting and making a noise. It's, you know, climbing is a peaceful thing, and it's about going out, for me, it's about going out into the countryside I know what I mean, bouldering with a radio. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's all right if you do that by yourself, but not if there's a load of other people there and, and stuff like that. So as, as long as people do are honest about what they do and they don't lie about it and they respect other people, then I think there's, there's enough room for climbing the Olympics competitions and climbing outside and doing new routes and, and the lifestyle of climbing, which is which is traveling the world, seeing different places. And, and if that starts in a climbing gym with somebody wanting to win the Olympics and then they go, oh, there's climbing outside and they go outside and they go, I want to go to Yosemite and they want to go to Australia, then that person's going to have a wonderful life and climbing will give them a lot. And I think that's good. By the way, I don't know how, how you perceive it in Britain, but we in Poland face a growing interest in climbing. I mean, more and more people climb. Yes. Some older climbers uh, are not really happy because they say a lot of new people, they don't know what is going on, they don't, know, they don't really want to, to climb in a deep sense of, of, of the word. Well, I, 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 I do not, I, I, I don't follow this path, yes. I, I, I yeah. like very much popularization of climbing. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, about it. Do you like the fact that more and it, more people know about yes, climbing? Yes, I think it's okay. I think it's quite good, yeah. As, you know, as long as you know, they stay indoors. And I, I think it's 
inevitable. It doesn't bother me. If I think it's nice to see the climbing growing and more people climbing. I think it's, I like it personally. I like to see it and I don't see any problem in it at all. I mean, I think most people who climb indoors, they go, they're not interested in the history, they're not interested in going outside, they're not interested in the best climber, but they want to go out and they have fun. And when you see them, they're all chatting and laughing and it's, it's good for your health. It's better than going to the gymnasium and, and going on a treadmill. And usually after some time, they become more and more interested in other elements yes. of climbing yes. and, yeah. and movement. Only. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, yeah. Have Thank a good time in Krakow. Yeah, Jerry. yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. My guest was Jerry Moffat. Dla, w, spiny, dla festiwalu górskiego, krakowskiego festiwalu górskiego. Mówił Andrzej Mechierzyński, Wiktor, przepraszam. Ślizgnąłem się przy zmianie języka, ale możecie mi to wypaczyć. Miłego wieczoru.